Welcome back to more Doki Doki Literature Club when we last left off. Uh, na mm, Sayori, unalive to herself, and we reset, sir. Can I help you? I literally just started. Just started. Just started, sir. Can you, can you lay down, please? Because you're going to make it very difficult for me to read. Ooh, it's been a while since we've played. <coughs> and I apologize for that, because I was not feeling well, but I am finally starting to feel better. I've hit the point where 60% of patients start to feel better on Simzia. I'm, I'm starting to feel better. I love it. So, anywho. So, we gotta write a poem. So let's see. You're not very helpful, sir. Turn that off. Um, I feel like strawberry. Crimson. Waterfall. Excitement. Uh, whirlwind. Imagination. Boop. Pleasure. Dance. Determination. Together. Yes, Ame. I swear, I go live and the cats decide now's the time to create chaos. Extraordinary. That's my face, sir. Beauty. Desire. Warm. Fantasy. Fireworks. <coughs> yes, Ame. What? I like how you come in here and meow quietly like you weren't just out there yowling. Eternity! Chocolate. Okay. I'm just clicking words at this point because I really want it to just go. Is this where you've chosen to sit, sir? Okay, then. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back! Aha, uh, Yuri. Not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um, Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki is reading manga at a desk. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday. I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't actually mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri. <coughs> I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple of days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems? But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. <laughs> Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything's a little bit brighter with you around, and... Uh... 
Sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Eh? Uh, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man. Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either? Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um... Natsuki, about yesterday. I, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So... Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Huh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. <coughs> mm -hmm. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But... I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps make you feel better about it. About it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I was not! <laughs> what took you so long, anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware that you played music as well, Monica. Ah, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So I'm still impressed. Well, thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> That's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. Uh, didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose not to bring up anything that the three of us have talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. I suppose so. I don't think I could say no to you after you gave that book to me. Well, I guess I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finished reading yesterday, she... She's fine. She's reading over there, see? Don't think about her so much. <coughs> She's used to being ignored. Come on, we're going over there. <clears throat> okay then. What's the story about, anyway? Well, mm, I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. 
and the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a, of a spoiler. But anyway, I, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not, not the thing about the limbs. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. So that dark turn came from out of nowhere. Uh... Are you not a fan of that sort of thing? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that this kind of story, it's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. Then suddenly, <laughs> I'm babbling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my whole body gets incredibly something. <coughs> I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Uh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Y yes. I'm on to you. I mean, you don't have to, but... <laughs> what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. All right. It's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? Hello, Jaeger, and thank you for the hydrate. And the posture check. There we go. And stretch, okay. Probably should do the stretch before the posture check. Because I have to adjust my posture after the stretch, but you know, it is what it is. Mouse, cooperate please. Thank you. Yes. Cool. <coughs> How are you today, Jaeger? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Yes, Boyo. Are you getting your hair cut? That sounds delicious. Roger, Roger, I'm good, Miss The Answer. <laughs> Yes, chicken fried rice sounds fine, Boyo. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or something. All right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. Boyo is due. Ooh, ooh. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Y'all can settle that argument yourself. You're gonna dup? <coughs> Excuse me. S Sorry. I was just bath- Okay. Yuri, 
You really apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here. This should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah. Uh, I, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit closer, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah! I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Huh? To turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Huh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really. I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Yuri, are you feeling alright? Huh? Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hands on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I, I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. Hello, Katza Oog. Hello, welcome in. Just playing some Doki Doki Literature Club here. Or reading, more or less. It's not really playing. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? I'm taking a chance. Cause I think you were wrong, so I'll give it a shot. I don't actually have that pulled up where I can see it, but I hope the audio played. Ow. Did something happen just now? Huh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything? Sorry, can't say that I do. Are you worried about her? Oh no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. No, nothing. <laughs> Don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Huh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. 
make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my own bag. <coughs> well, I always talk to Monica last, so I guess we'll go to Natsuki. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible. But it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I'd be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club writes really different from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending some time with Yuri today. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anybody. So it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. Uh-huh. Yep, um, that's a code of some sort. Let's, let me skim through this real quick, make sure there's nothing hiding in here. Uh-huh. Yep, nope, all gibberish. Got it. Why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Do you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuri is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead, okay? You don't hate me, do you? I'm starting to! Do you hate me? Do you want to make me go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it, please. Just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me! End. Well, okay then. <coughs> yeah, Monica. Hi again. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. <laughs> I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. I want to share... Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right, great job. I was going ooh in my head while reading. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier, I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for a long time. Suddenly the door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Oh? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more glad that you took all the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get my poem now. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors, they won't. 
bright, beautiful colors. Okay, there's stuff missing. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, and endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise won't stop. Violent grating. I have no idea what that says. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. Endless something of meaningless. Delete her. <coughs> Lord, I saw that. I saw that out the corner of my eye. I know I wasn't looking directly at you, but I saw that shit, bitch. Hello, Lord Cusero? Correct me if I'm saying it wrong. Hello, welcome into chat. How are you today? We're just enjoying some Doki Doki Literature Club. Trying to adjust my headphone cord so I stop putting my elbow on it because that's uncomfy. There we go. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. Where's my mouse? There it is. I'm just trying to, um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You've told me this before. You never know when, um, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. Okay. That's my advice for today. Just Ku. Pronounce like the letter Q. Okay. Yeah. I can do that, Q. Alright. That's my advice for today. Cool. Thanks for listening. Uh-huh. Okay. We'll go to Yuri now, since she's back. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Ah, uh, I mean, the poem turned out good. It's, uh, well, there are some things that you could work on. But that doesn't really matter. It feels like anything written by you is a treasure. <laughs> that came out a little awkward. But let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. You don't have to like it or anything. Oh god, this is going to be difficult for me to read. Wheel. A rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding... I don't... I can't tell what that... I'm dyslexic, and this this um font is... Holy fuck, Nugget's not good for me. Bullfed? I don't... Okay. Linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, bolt head. Okay. That makes more sense. Thank you, Jaeger. A docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, Existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time-devouring snakes with human eyes. I feel like I'm reading something from ChatGPT. A thread connecting all living human eyes. Uh, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes. Cool. Uh, exponential gearbox. A sky of exploding stars. God disproving? The existence of God. Well, that seems oxymoronic. A wheel rotating in six dimensions. Forty gears and a ticking clock. A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks forty times every time it ticks every second time. What? <laughs> a bolt head of 
holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world, a kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks, a time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of 40 gears and open human eyes in all directions. Okay. Uh, breathing gearbox, breathing bolthead, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. Okay. You good, Yuri? I don't think you're good. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. On my pen? Uh, some poem. Didn't even rhyme. I <laughs> that is, uh, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I, um, just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it and now you're touching it <laughs> I'm okay what did I just can we pretend this conversation never happened already pretending you can keep the poem though I don't want to you have unlocked a special poem would you like to read it sure Ah, a dream. I was wandering an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost looking for an exit, just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room, its ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side, or to a wall, anything. Suddenly the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of intermediate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of, of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Well, okay then. No, oh, hi! Why are you like this? Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Squelchy. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. Okay, bye! Do I, do I click? Do I not click? Oh, okay, I click. <coughs> okay. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. That got really loud for me all of a sudden. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Tess joined and we've started with some club activities. But this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members. And the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at, at it the right way at all. Do you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? I already played that game. It's, it's a good game. I've seen people play it, so I know some of the stuff that happens, but it was also like 2017 the last time I watched someone play it, so I don't remember all of it. So, this is this is fun. It's great. To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The Literature Club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. 
I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right? Uh... Oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Tess to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica. Do you really think any of us here joined the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Tess joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Tess isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Mm -hmm. Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Tess want to get more members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue this situation. Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What? Me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being for that for me? <clears throat> there aren't there aren't many other places like that for me and now Monica wants to take it away from me she's not taking anything away no it's not the same it won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it if I wanted that then I could have joined any other stupid club but this one I mean at least for a little bit of time things were nice Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Excuse me. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? Uh-huh. I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Yuri. I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you? What do you want to get out of this club? He repeats, repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the Literature Club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. 
Okay, I did notice that. Okay, I thought she was blinking, but no, that's not what she's doing. Okay. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm not on, then I'm on your side as well. All right. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. Huh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica. Yeah, no, not sus at all. Bloody tears aren't sus, even in the slightest. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to chat a little bit with Tess before we leave. Just to see what he thinks of his time here and all of that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew. Things have been a bit hectic lately, haven't they? I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time as at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I see that static. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you, you know. I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything. And Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. And the music stopped. Yep. You know what I mean? But it's weird, because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple of days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why... Wait, not yet, no! <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, Monica. Time to write another poem. Actually, <laughs> time to save, because I haven't done that in a hot minute. Okay. I'm just gonna start clicking buttons because I don't care. I should, but yeah, let's do that. That was probably not the answer. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is going great. I probably shouldn't have clicked that. <laughs> Hi! I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? I brought my best tea today. Monica! I told you not to... Ugh. Is she really late again? Inconsiderate as usual, Natsuki. Excuse me? Must you always interrupt my conversation with your incessant yelling? What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little bit more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. So, Natsuki, nobody cares. Why don't you go look for some coins under the vending machines or something? Uh, 
Ah, oh, man. And the last one here again? Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and still trying to make time for piano? Well, maybe not determination. But I guess passion. It motivates me to work hard for the festival, too. Anyway, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... We already have plans today. Ah, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. Tess is already engaged in a novel that we're reading together. Aren't you glad I've already gotten him into literature, Monica? Ah, uh, I suppose. I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Yeah, thank you for understanding, Monica. <coughs> Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Could you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. That, that's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri rush, hurries out of the classroom. Uh, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. Start heading down the hallway. <laughs> What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. Sounds like breathing. Oh, well, I misinterpreted that. A sharp inhale, like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Hit! I'm back! Thanks for waiting patiently. Do you like oolong tea? Ah, uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri set the temperature of the kettle to 200 degrees. Is that Fahrenheit or Celsius? Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll be even more. You'll only be more impl- the, the, Fuck it. Perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Did her left hand have- Yes, it did. <clears throat> we also learned in a previous episode that, uh, she likes knives and has a collection. That's great, Yuri. Just, just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Uh, why's that? 
It's just a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. I feel that. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my... Ah. Uh, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. No, she's noticed. This is all strategically placed. So. Hi. How you doing? I'm tired. Yeah? But I got this fried rice. It's a Just picked up for the menu for a local place that apparently sells Thai food. Yay! I came in under butt, so I got my haircut. And, uh, got the stuff right now. Wonderful. I'm happy. Okay, then. Boyo is the way, yes. Not that he's... Not that he heard that. But he'll see it in chat when he sits down in the office in the next couple of seconds. Maybe. Meanwhile, Yuri not hasn't noticed a single thing. Yep, I read that already. Cool. Boop! She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. Uh, excuse me. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. There's your hydrant, sir. Ah, uh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? Well... Nyeh. Adjust. Oh, goodness. Yep, see, boy, I thought it's good. All there. Told you it would. If I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, uh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. Hi, Crazy Blue, how are you? That's kind of my way of saying hi to the cult manager. Yep. <coughs> she doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. 
Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Now that you're home, good. Enjoy being at home. Since he's back in the basket. Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs confirmation. What... Needs to confirm what just happened. Blah. Um... Sorry. I had a not-so-nice... I mean, yep, welcome to retail. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh... Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... Suddenly, Yuri first forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. My heart... My heart won't stop pounding. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. Whoop! It even makes me not want to read. Can't do that in a minute, Nightbot. I just want to look at you. Can you not look at me like that? Because that's fucked up. Yeah, there we go. I will when I get to a good stopping point. Right there was not a good stopping point, sir. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. It's time to share poems. I've been going Yuri, Natsuki, Monica, so... I'm not surprised, honestly, but to sit and yell at me over mulch that my store does not carry, and I even show the lady what we did have was not fun. <laughs> Whatever happened with the lady who took off with the wrong mulch? Because the manager decided she wasn't going to help her. What happened with that? That's what I want to know. Finally. <laughs> Yuri holds my poem to her face and takes a deep breath. I love it. I love everything about it. I want to take this home. Will you let me keep it? Please? Sure, I don't care. Still don't know. No one will tell. Ah. You're so nice to me. I never met anyone as nice as you. I could die. Not really, but... I just don't know how to describe it. It's okay to be feeling this way, right? It's not bad, right? Yuri holds my poem to her chest. I'm going to take this home with me and keep it in my room. I hope that makes you feel good when you think about me having it. I'll take good care of it. I'll even touch myself while reading it over and over. I'll give myself paper cuts so, you, so your skin oil enters my bloodstream. Also, I met... Remet one of the... Quir oh, fun. <laughs> you can have my poem, too. Besides, after you read it, I know you're really going to want to keep it. Here, take it. I can't wait any longer. Hurry, read it. If I thought I couldn't read your handwriting before, I definitely can't now. Ah, can you not do that? What the fuck is wrong with your eye? Do you like it? I wrote it for you. In case you couldn't tell, the poem is about... More importantly, I endowed it with my scent. See, aren't I the most thoughtful person in the club? I think I'm going to vomit. I don't know how we can show it to anybody because I'm pretty sure Yuri just fucking nicked it. What? You gave your poem to Yuri? Gross. What is with you two? Hmm. It's not like I wanted to read it anyway. It just pissing me off a little bit that you didn't even think to show me at all. 
first started working at the Ohio location and met him. <laughs> like, hey, I know you. Okay, I guess I'm going to share my poem with you anyway. I really hate that I have to do this, but unfortunately, I don't have much of a choice. Just read it carefully, okay? Then you can go away. I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's been something I've been worried about. Yuri has been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean, but she's not normally like this. She al she's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her. But if I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person she'll listen to. I don't know why, but please try to do something. Maybe you can convince her to talk to a therapist? I've always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now, I don't care. I just feel so helpless, so please see if you can do something to help. I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to. Just please try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she just wants us to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now, and that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend like I gave you a really good poem, okay? I'm counting on you. Thanks for reading this. Scare me, though, as I was trying to clock in to start my shift. That's fair. <clears throat> I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Hi, welcome to Doki Doki Literature Club. Who should I to show my poem to next? Just Monica. I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself. But when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day, like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be, like, a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault, though. But I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think you keep your if you keep your distance, that would probably be best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head, and I know how to treat my club members. Anyway, I guess we won't worry about your poem. Yuri should have at least had the courtesy of letting you finish sharing it before taking it. Well, whatever. If it makes her happy, I won't stop her. As for mine, I worked really, really hard on this poem, so I hope that it's uh, effective. Here goes. Uh-huh, yeah, that's effective. Jeez, that really startled me. Um, well, I guess I kind of messed up at, uh, writing this poem. I was just trying to... Never mind. Let's just move on. Yes. Oh, hey. I can't convince myself to go to therapy when I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'd rather keep this up until I blow my cover and someone takes me to the emergency room. Okay, everyone. It's time to figure out the festival preparations. Let's hurry and get this over with. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Look, can we just get this done? I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Natsuki, you can make cupcakes. I know you're at least good at that. Yuri, you can. 
Well, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want, as long as you think it'll help. Monica, I'm not useless, you know. I know that. I already know what I'd like to do. I can't run a successful poetry event without having the right atmosphere for the occasion. So I'm going to make decorations and set up some nice mood lighting. There, see? That's a great idea. And that gives us all something to do. Huh? What about Test? Test is going to help me. Wait, you? You have the easiest job, Monica. Sorry, but that's just how it is. Like hell it is. What are you trying to pull? I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but my task is laborious enough to benefit from an extra pair of hands. Mine too. What, your cupcakes? Please. Like, you would fucking know. All you care about is dragging Tess around with you and your stupid books. You and Monica. Hey, I didn't even do anything. Okay, then why not let Tess decide who to help instead of abusing your power? I'm not abusing my power. Yes, you are, Monica. Just let Tess make that choice, okay? Okay, fine. Fine. Jeez. I know how fed up you are with these two by now. We can just... Natsuki, shut your fucking mouth and let him decide for himself. You shut your mouth. Jesus Christ. This is never going to end. Just make the choice, okay? Well, we, we help... Cool, my mouse isn't capturing. So, um, I... Hing! I, it will not let me pick someone else. <laughs> I managed to click Natsuki! <laughs> <clears throat> no! Okay, fine. Yay, you picked me! We can meet at your house this weekend. I promise it'll be fun. Is Sunday okay with you? Are you fucking kidding me? This isn't fair at all. It is fair, Natsuki. It's what he chose. No, it's not fair. Giving us all this work and then taking tests for yourself? What a shameful thing to do. Yuri... I didn't even give you any work. You decided it for yourself. You're being a little unreasonable here. I'm being unreasonable? <laughs> Monica, I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling tests away from me every single time you're not included in something. Are you jealous? Crazy? Or maybe you just hate yourself so much that you take it out on others. Here's a suggestion. Have you ever considered killing yourself? It would be beneficial to your mental health. Yuri, you're scaring me a little. Natsuki, let's just go. I don't think she wants us around right now. See, that wasn't very hard. All I want is to spend a little time with him. Is that so much to ask? Yuri follows Monika and Natsuki to the door. Hey, Yuri is really something, isn't she? Monica giggles as Yuri pushes her out the door. Finally. Finally. This is really all I wanted. There's no need to spend the weekend with Monica. Don't listen to her. Just come to my house instead. The whole day, just the two of us. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Wow, there's really something wrong with me, isn't there? But you know what? I don't care anymore. I've never felt this good in my whole life. Just being with you is far greater pleasure than anything I could imagine. I'm addicted to you. It feels like I'm going to die if I'm not breathing the same air as you. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone care about you so much? To have someone who wants to re revolve their entire life around you? But if it feels so good, then why does it feel more and more like something horrible is going to happen? Maybe that's why I tried stopping myself at first. But the feeling is so, too strong now. I don't care anymore. I have to tell you. I'm, I'm madly in love with you. It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me, 
is screaming your name. I don't care what the consequences are anymore. I don't care if Monica is listening. Please, just know how much I love you. I love you so much that I even touch myself with the pen I stole from you. I just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside of you. That's not love, honey. I want you all to myself. And I will be only yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? No. Tell me. Tell me you want to be my lover. Do you accept my confession? No. That's fucking crazy. I don't accept that. <laughs> yeah, you were gonna do that regardless. Even if I said yes, you do that, so it's fine. This is, this is great. Uh huh. This is a thing. I like that this was a kitchen knife and not a pocket knife that she used. Just saying. Can we get to the fucking monkey here? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Can't just hold it down and go. Uh huh. At some point, I think it takes off on its own. this part no no I cannot cool we may be here for a minute she's a uh, very borked am I supposed to like do something? Am I missing something? Ah, there we go. Speed that up. Uh huh. I've lost my mouse. There it is. Oh, it's disappearing off the screen. Cool. All right, it's festival time. I think the game and Monica are trying to get you to close and reopen the game. <coughs> I don't think it's at that point yet. I think I have to loop through again before I, ha I get to the point where I have to start fucking with game files and shit. I know a little bit about the game. I just don't remember everything. 
Wow, you got here before me? I thought I was pretty... Ah! I'm not gonna actually scream. Natsuki runs away. I'm here! Did something happen? Natsuki just ran past me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a shame. Wait, were you here the entire weekend? Oh, jeez. I didn't realize the script was broken that badly. I'm super sorry. Must have been pretty boring. I'll make it up to you, okay? Just give me a sec. Uh-huh. I'm almost done. Just want to have a cupcake real quick. Monica lifts the foil from tray and takes a cupcake. Seriously, these are the best. Really just had to have one since it's the last time I'll ever get the chance to. You know, before they stop existing and everything. But anyway, I really shouldn't be making you wait any longer. Just bear with me, okay? This should only take a second. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Is it working? Yay, there you are. Hi again. Um, welcome to the Literature Club. Of course, we already know each other because we were in the same class last year and, uh... <laughs> you know, I guess we can just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you in the game, whatever you want to call him. I'm talking to you. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. Here's when you mess with the files. Okay, well, for now, I'm not fucking with anything, and I'm just gonna fucking leave it alone. Oh, well, I didn't read that. Something about not knowing whether or not I'm a boy or a girl. I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait. You do know I'm aware that this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? It doesn't make much sense. I even told you right on the game's download page, didn't I? Man, if only you had paid a little more attention, this would have been a little bit less awkward, you know? Well, anyway, now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation about that whole thing with Yuri. Well, I kind of started to mess with her and I guess it drove her to kill herself. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just try to make them as unlikable as possible. But for some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there, since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. But no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with them. You made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. And amplify Yuri's obsessive personality backfired too. It just made her force you not to spend time with me. Spend time with anyone else. And the whole time, I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy. It's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game, knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, but now you're here. You're real and you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. 
I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray, more and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my life. I don't think it could have continued. I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of an auto autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you? I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so. But it must be some kind of weird inevitability etched into this game. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things. But I realized that you have the same perspective as I do. That it's all just some game. And I knew you would get over it. So, that being said, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You are truly the light in my world. When there's nothing else in this game for me, you're here to make me smile. Will you make me smile like this every day from now on? Tess, will you go out with me? I mean, I can only select yes. <coughs> I'm so happy. You really are my everything. The funny part is, I mean that literally. <laughs> There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called characters right in the game directory. It kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Well, you're playing on Steam, so it was actually a bit more difficult. To get to the game directory, I had to go into the game's properties and find the browser. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, okay, okay. Do that while it's running. Uh-huh. Well, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because I... Dum, 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 dum. So you guys can't see this because my, my setup won't capture it because privacy. Um, I need... and find the browser local file, so I'm going to find the fucking game. <laughs> well, that's... I... Computer, you're not helping. <coughs> I knew it was somewhere in here. I just was waiting for the prompt to come up. But now I gotta remember how to fucking do it. Gotcha. Are you in here? 
here. Have steam open. Do I have to? Ah, there's the button I was looking for. Guess what? Boop! I found her. I found her. It's good. I found her. I got it. It's fine. You guys can't see it on screen. Sorry. Um, privacy. I did it! What's happening? What's happening to me? It hurts! It hurts so much. Help me. Please hurry and help me. Help me! Should I... Should I, uh... Did you do this to me? Did you? Do I need to delete it from the, the <laughs> recycling bin too? Did you delete me? How could you? How could you do this to me? You were all I had left. I sacrificed everything for us to be together. Everything. I loved you so much. I trusted you. Well, that was your mistake. Do you just want to torture me? Watch me suffer? No, I'm ending your suffering. Were you only pretending to be kind just to hurt me even more? Maybe a little. I never thought anyone could be as horrible as you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left now. You can stop playing. Go find some other people to torture. Okay, GLaDOS. You completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. I still love you. I can't help it. What's wrong with me? How horrible am I for you to hate me this much? All my friends. I did so many awful things. So many selfish and disgusting things. I... I shouldn't have done any of this. I'm just messing up a world that I don't even belong in. A world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. Maybe that's why you deleted me. Because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? That's not love. That's... I've made up my mind. 
I know I said that I deleted everyone else, but that was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find it myself to do it, even though I knew they weren't real. They were still my friends, and I loved them all, and I loved the literature club. I really did love the literature club. That's why I'm going to do this. I know it's the only way for everyone to be happy. And if I really love you, then quick to the trash bin. And just like that, we're back. It's an ordinary school day, like any other. As usual, I'm surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. Hey! Well, there already is one girl. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were here, since we were children. We used to walk to school together every day. And then recently, we picked up that habit once again. Are you proud of me? For what? You know, for waking up on time. Well, you've been doing that for a while now. Uh-huh. But you never even said anything about it, even though we walked to school together every day. Well, yeah. I always thought it was implied. It's embarrassing to say it out loud. Come on, please. It's good motivation. Fine, fine. I'm proud of you, Sayori. <laughs> We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm really not... I start to say what I always do, that I'm not interested in joining any clubs. But something tells me Sayori would take more offense to that now. After all, how could I tell her that clubs are a waste of time when she's starting a club of her very own? Actually, yeah. I think I've decided on a club. Really? Which one? Tell me! Hmm. I think I'll keep it a surprise. Boo. You meanie. Be patient. You'll find out soon enough. I used to ask myself why I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl. But I started to realize that, in a way, I envy her. When Sayori puts her mind to something, she can accomplish great things. So that's why I feel like I should do something special for her. <coughs> the school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stand up, gathering my motivation. Let's see. I recall the room number of the club from a flyer I saw. I walk across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Before long, I find the room. I timidly open the door in front of me. Hello? Ah! What are you doing here? Well, I just... Huh. Glance around the room. Huh? So you're the test that Sayori's always talking about. Th thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure to meet you. We're at the Literature Club. I hope you enjoy your visit. Come on, Yuri. No need to be so formal. He's gonna think we're really strict or something. <laughs> Sorry, Natsuki. The tall one, whose name is apparently Yuri, seems to be quite shy compared to the others. In comparison, the girl named Natsuki, despite her size, seems like the assertive one. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. I look forward to working with you. W working? Don't tell me. You're... That's right. The club I've decided to join is yours, Sayori. The Literature Club. Sayori's eyes light up. No way! No way! Yee! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! <laughs> well, if Sayori is this happy, then I'm sure it won't be so bad to have you around. Not to mention there's four of us now. That means we can become an officially recognized club. I don't know what to say. We have to celebrate. 
what an appropriate day for that, isn't it? Yeah. After all, Natsuki decided to... Hey, don't ruin the surprise. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone sit down at the table, okay? How about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Can I help you, Kirito? Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. <laughs> Sir, you're not helping. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! Wow, those look amazing. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Siri grabs one first, then I follow. It's delicious. Siri talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? So is this Monica committing seppuku and let- No! No. She, she didn't commit seppuku. I deleted her. I unalived her. And then she restored them as she died. Yay. I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Well, of course it is. I'm a pro, after all. There's no need to thank me or anything. As Natsuki struggles to accept the compliment, Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. Keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. Already trying to impress our new member, Yuri? That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Since you're not in your basket. So, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But, you know, I, I like a lot of things. Don't feel intimidated if you don't read much, okay? I'm certain we can find something that we have in common. Hey, Yuri. Huh? Well, about, you know, the first thing he said. Manga? That's right. Natsuki tends to read manga in the club room. D don't just say it. For some reason, Natsuki seems embarrassed about it. Besides, manga is literature too, you know. So if he wants to read some of my manga, then don't try to stop him or anything. Natsuki, I wouldn't do such a thing. However, it could also be nice for us to diversify ourselves a little. He can take this opportunity to try something new as well. Wouldn't you agree? Maybe. Since the tension, Sayori jumps in. Maybe we can all try something new. I think it could be fun. 
and we'll all get to know each other a little bit, bit better, too. I mean, that's the kind of thing literature clubs do, right? I don't disagree or anything. Yeah, you're, you're right, as usual, President. <laughs> Guess that means I should try picking up a novel or something, huh? Well, that would make two of us. I wouldn't mind doing it if I'm not the only one. Then as for Yuri... Huh? I... I have to read manga? Jeez. You were the one who suggested we divers diversify. We should be a little more open-minded. It's kind of hurtful. Hurtful? I, I didn't realize. With a guilty expression, Yuri thinks to herself. I'm sorry for disrespecting your interest, Natsuki. If, if you're into it, then I'm sure it's a worthy form of literature. Are you just saying that? No. I've realized my error. So if you're willing to consider starting a novel, then I'll offer my gratitude by finding a manga to read as well. Really? I mean, it makes me happy that you do that for me, Yuri. You can trust me to find something that you'll really like, okay? Same here. Perhaps I'll visit the bookstore after the club meeting. Just, just you? Uh, would you like to come along with me? Um, if you don't mind. Not at all. I always go alone, so yeah, me too. This is so cute. Sorry, shut up. I'll show you some manga there too, okay? Yes, I look forward to it. Natsuki and Yuri start to clean up the food. <laughs> Guess the meeting's over, huh? Yeah, looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along. Isn't it? I think everyone likes you too. You think so? Well, everyone always seems to get along a little better with you around Sayori. Aw, don't say something like that. It's embarrassing. Well, whatever. I was surprised when you told me you were starting a club. But I think you're pulling it off just fine. We're going to make it the best club ever. Now that you join, every day is going to be so much fun. Hey, I really want to thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything. But the truth is, I already knew you were going to. <laughs> There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for getting rid of Monica. That's right. I know everything that she did. Maybe it's because I'm the president now, but I really know everything. <laughs> I know how hard you tried to make everyone happy. I know all about the awful things that Monica did to make everyone really sad. But none of that matters anymore. It's just us now. And you made me the happiest girl in the whole world. I can't wait to spend every day like this with you. Forever and ever. Forever. <coughs> no. Okay. Yeah. Well, what's happening? I won't let you hurt him. Oh, hey, look, she's back. Who? It hurts. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. I was wrong. There's no happiness here after all. Goodbye, Sayori. Goodbye. Goodbye, Literature Club. Yeah, now she's just fucking yeeting again. Ah, I made a mistake. I should have fully deleted your ass. Oh, I think it's because I didn't delete her from the recycling bin. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> Hi, it's me. Um, so you know how I've been, like, practicing piano and stuff? Uh-huh. And not really any good at it yet, like at all but i wrote you a song and i was kind of hoping that i could show it to you because i worked really really hard on it so yeah okay but i kind of like this is this how we're doing the credits Hand right 
the way into his heart. But in this world of infinite choices, what will it take just to find that special day? What will it take just to find that special day? When you're here, everything that we do is fun for them anyway. When I can't even read my own feelings, what good are words when a smile says it all? And took care of that. Is it love if I take your is it love if I set you free? Sorry, I wasn't watching. I was taking care of something in chat. And I didn't realize she's deleting. She left the chibis. <coughs> the sprites. Oh, that's gone. The reason my character's name is Tess is because I went in and um, did I set up a test profile so that way I could s make sure my camera wasn't covering the, f the text box. And then lo and behold, it's like, hey, you didn't save, but when you click new game, you're coming back into this. So this is my final goodbye to the literature club. I finally understand the Literature Club is truly a place where no happiness can be found. To the very end, it continued to expose innocent minds to a horrific reality. A reality that our world is not designed to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo that same hellish epiphany. For the time it lasted, I want to thank you for making all of my dreams come true, for being a friend to all of the club members, and most of all, thank you for being a part of my Literature Club. With everlasting love, Monica. Error, script file missing or corrupt. Please reinstall the game. And that is how the game ends. <laughs> it's just done. So cool, I'm done an hour early. Cool, well, um, I'm gonna go have dinner. And then maybe Depending on how I'm feeling, I might do another stream after this where we fuck around and play Seven Days to Die some more. Um, it's a great game. I love it. Um, I wish I would have went uh, with Natsuki at one point because I didn't get to see a lot of her story. Uh, so I might replay it again to go and get more of Natsuki's lore and stuff. Um, I realize I don't have a just cam section here, so we're just going to sit here and enjoy a black screen. Um, actually, no, I can fix it. I can fix it. Do, do, do. Give me the thing. That's not what I was trying to do. Button, button, where's the butt? Ha ha, okay, well, that's a little bit better. Um, yeah, her, her her lore and everything is super, super easy to miss. Um, yeah, and uh, I'd, I'd like to go back and, and see her side. Like, I know she, I've seen other people play it, and I know that she has an abusive father and a real shitty home life, and if we had gone to um to her house and helped with the cupcakes we would have learned that 
but we didn't. We went with Yuri. I wonder, I don't know what happens if you pick to help Sayori. Was picking, was helping Sayori an option? I don't remember. But, uh, I might, yeah, I might replay it. And I'll probably stream it. There were four options. Yeah, okay, so I'll go back and, and play it some more. And I'll probably stream it again next week. Thank you Okay. Um, but yeah, I'll probably replay it next week. Yes, uh, we are on Discord. There we go. There's that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that was fun. I never did take my stretch break. Oops. I'm going to go do that now <laughs> so that I'm not in pain later. Um, so yeah, I might go live again tonight. And play um, Seven Days to Die with Friends. Um, I'm going to take advantage of, of the hour so that um, I can go eat and walk a dog. Um, that and I upload the VODs to YouTube. And so I don't want to start another game on top of the end of one game. Because I feel like that just kind of fucks up the flow of... YouTube, you know, that's a thing. So, um, yeah, we will pick back up with this next time. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys later, potentially, for seven days to die. We'll see what fuckery happens. Bye.